Duncan's Behead Lighthouse in Caithness was established in 1924, three years after the Northern Lighthouse Commissioners had agreed to the scheme. It sits roughly a mile and a half from John O'Groats. It was designed by David Allen Stevenson, a cousin of author Robert Louis Stevenson, and sits on the most northeasterly point on the British mainland. The tapering concrete whitewashed tower, which also has a balcony, is 11 metres high, or 36 feet, sitting at the top of a 67-metre cliff, roughly 220 feet. Its range is 21 nautical miles, and the white polygonal lantern flashes every 12 seconds. Its lamps were lit for the first time on Saturday, 15th March, that year. Following the outbreak of World War I, a temporary foghorn was set up at Duncansby Head, but a lighthouse was required due to the swirling waters of the Pentland Firth and the North Sea meeting. The work was completed in 1924. The new permanent foghorn, which was situated in front of the lighthouse, was also sounded for the first time on 15th March, sounding five blasts, each of two and a half seconds in duration, in quick succession, every two minutes. On Saturday 12th March 1932, the Grimsby trawler, Dragon, ran onto rocks between Duncansby Ness and the John O'Groats Hotel, due to a stiff breeze that morning. She set off distress flares which were seen by the keepers at Duncansby Head. They alerted the Wick lifeboat, but by the time they arrived, a crew of volunteers at Scarfskerry had made contact and were in the process of bringing the 15 crew ashore. The boat, however, was lost. During World War II, the lighthouse was targeted by two German warplanes in April 1940. The planes had already attacked two trawlers in the Pentland Firth, with a machine gun from one of the bombers firing at the lighthouse, but it did no damage. Luckily, no one was injured, as the keepers and their families had all taken shelter. On Tuesday, 21st September 1948, the Glasgow vessel Navara, which was making its way from Gothenburg in Sweden to Belfast, passed through the Pentland Firth. On board was the second officer, Robert Campbell, who caught sight of the lighthouse, so semaphored a message to his family. It was picked up through a telescope by his father, James Campbell, the principal keeper of Duncansby. On Tuesday, 17th June 1952, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, made a surprise visit to the Duncansby Head Lighthouse and was shown around by the principal keeper, Alexander C. Dishorn. She had been staying at Dunnet with Commander C. G. Viner and his wife Doris, who also accompanied her. In May 1954, Caithness was suffering from an outbreak of flu and the lighthouse keepers at Noss Head, north of Wick, found themselves unable to work, so a keeper from Duncansby and an occasional keeper from Wick were summoned to help out during the crisis. The foghorn at the lighthouse has come into its own on numerous occasions. One of these was during the summer of 1955. The weekend of 9th July that year was sunny and hot, except for eastern coastal areas. From Friday 8th at around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and for the next three days, the Duncan's Bay Head foghorn blasted out its signal due to the thick fog that stubbornly clung to the land. 
In 1968, a high-powered radar beacon was installed, but this was later replaced by a low-power beacon, as the land wasn't particularly well picked up on radar. On 31st March 1997, Duncansby Head Lighthouse became fully automated from the Northern Lighthouse Board headquarters in Edinburgh, thanks to £60,000 worth of electronic equipment. The last principal keeper was 64-year-old Bruce Brown of Loch Gelly in Fife, who'd worked there for 11 years, along with two other keepers. He described life there as harsh at times, with fearsome winds, and with the lighthouse being on the cliff top, there was no shelter from the storms. On one occasion, his wife Hazel had been returning home during a particularly windy day. He happened to look out of the living room window and saw her being thrown off her feet by a 100 mile an hour gust as she stepped out of her friend's car. Although she was unhurt, she was a bit shaken. The lighthouse was the last on the east coast of Scotland to be fully automated. Following this decision, however, problems arose. In December 1997, it was noticed by Mrs Elna Davidson of John O'Groats, whose home sat in direct line of the lighthouse, that the light wasn't flashing when she got up at seven o'clock that morning. She later learned it had been out all night. On 2nd and 3rd January 1998, the lighthouse only produced a weak signal, which locals in John O'Groats described as being like a handheld, battery-operated torch. A phone call was made to the Coast Guard, Kevin Doherty in Kirkwall on 2nd January, about the light operating on reduced power, so he in turn got in touch with the Northern Lighthouse Board in Edinburgh. It was confirmed there was an issue, but by 4.30 the following afternoon it was working properly. The fault had been traced and rectified. In 2018, the lighthouse underwent upgrading at a cost of over £260,000. The Northern Lighthouse Board oversaw the work, which included removing the optic lamp and the electrical operating system, and replacing them with a power-saving LED system. The lighthouse tower and adjoining buildings were also refurbished. The lighthouse served as a communications centre for the lighthouse at North Ronaldsea and the rock stations on the island of Stroma, which lies just off John O'Groats, the Pentland Skerries, Coppensey and Sewell Skerry. 2024 marks its 100 years of operation. If you enjoyed this episode of Scotland's History, Please like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, thank you for watching.